Hey, it's Tim, K5OHY. I'm out at one of my favorite parks and I'm gonna be trying out this antenna. This is a 40 meter in-fed half wave. Over my last couple videos, I've explored this antenna. In the first one, I take a look at some of the basics of an in-fed half wave, and then I built a efficient 49 to one on it. And then in my last video, I look at some of the configurations and the radiation patterns using computer modeling, trying to figure out how I want to deploy this antenna. And then finally in this video, I'm actually going to deploy this antenna and see how well it works. Uh, yesterday was Thanksgiving and while my family was digesting the smoked turkey, um, I came out and cut a little bit of wire, uh, about 67 and a half feet for the radiating element and then about six feet for the counterpoise. And I briefly deployed this antenna um, and hooked it to my Nano VNA and I made a couple adjustments. Now I cut the wire long and I'd fold it over about a couple feet and I only had to adjust about, I don't know, maybe six inches after that. And uh, I didn't spend a whole lot of time, but the resonant parts were, looked pretty good. It looked good on 50, 20 meters, 15 meters, and 10 meters. Here's a quick look at the Nano VNA sweeps. The initial sweep showed the SWR dips were in the CW portion on 10 meters and 15 meters. However, on 20 and 40 meters, it was slightly below the band edge. I decided to shorten the antenna slightly. And here on the second sweep, you'll notice that 10 to 15 meters have shifted a little bit above the CW portion of the band, um, but now it looks pretty good on 20 meters and 40 meters. The lowest SWR I got on 40 meters was only 2.2. Um, however, I don't plan on using this antenna much on 40 meters, so I'm not really gonna worry about it. On 10 to 15 meters, if uh, I'm worried about the SWR, I can touch it up with the tuner. So I'm just gonna leave it here for this activation. Big Spring State Park is probably my favorite place to come try out antennas. Uh, this part of the park is a little picnic area and it's not used very often. In fact, I've never really seen anybody else out here, um, at least not on the weekdays. And so I can kind of set up my antenna and not bother anybody and, and, and stuff. So it makes for a good spot. The other reason that I really enjoy this park is it's up on a bluff about 200 feet. And so uh, really helps uh, get your signal out a little bit better, I think. It's kind of like being up on a 200 foot tower. This park is actually pretty interesting as far as the history goes. Uh, the Big Spring was the most reliable watering source for the Comanche. And if you're interested in some of the history, you can look at uh, a video I made a while back on this park. So I'm gonna go ahead and deploy this antenna. But first I wanna talk a little bit um, about the infed half wave. There's, there's a lot of criticisms on this antenna and, and rightfully so. It's not the most efficient antenna. The common 49 to one unins, uh, the traditional methods of winding them, typically have uh, quite a bit of loss associated. About 20 to 30% of your power is getting lost in the 49 to one transformer. And so I actually haven't used this antenna much in the last year for that reason. Um, I was doing an activation a little over a year ago and I had used a 20 meter vertical infed half wave. And after about an hour, I came out, packed my stuff up and I touched the, the 49 to one and it, it was really hot. In fact, uh, you could see it depressing the 3D printed enclosure. It was kind of almost uh, melting through. Um, and so I kind of come to the conclusion that, you know, if we're losing that much uh, power to heat, it, I might use other antennas. And so I really haven't used it much. But I came across uh, Colin MM0OPX and his YouTube channel, and he was uh, showing some methods of winding a 49 to one that were more efficient. So I've been wanting to give that a try. I built a 49 to one using a uh, tour that he recommends which is kind of thicker and a little bit taller and he ran hundred watts digital through this thing for a number of hours and it didn't fail the time that I used the 49 to 1 where it got so hot I'd actually noticed that the SWR was climbing a little bit uh, during the activation I would stop transmitting and it would come back down so it was kind of failing uh, due to heat this this toroid supposedly can handle 100 watts digital so it should be fine I'm probably gonna run about 75 watts today uh, because I kind of want to put it through its paces um, now after looking at the radiation patterns I've decided to use an inverted L in my last video I look at a sloper inverted V uh, inverted L 
and after looking at a few of the different configurations, I think the inverted L has the best radiation patterns on all the bands. Um, on 20 meters, it has some really nice broadside gain to the to horizontal L. And then on 15 meters, you get a couple really nice lobes, 45 degrees off the end of the wire, and the same on 10 meters. The inverted V looked a little bit better on 20 meters. It had a little bit lower angle gain. Um, but it didn't look good on 15 meters. So I chose the inverted L. And after looking at the radiation patterns, I've decided to deploy the inverted L with the wire facing north, which is in this direction. Here's a quick recap of the computer modeling on 15 meters with the inverted L. As you can see, the antenna is this blue wire right here. And off the corners of the end of the wire, we have these two nice lobes. You can see here about 45 degrees, we have these two front lobes, and then we have two back lobes and a clover leaf pattern. Now, after I uploaded my last video, I realized instead of running the inverted L on the Y axis here, if I shift it over about 40 degrees, now we can get the max gain on our elevation plot. And so we have our max gain at 20 degrees, it's 6.1 dB. And then at 5 degrees, we're at negative 1.4. And then at 10 degrees, 3.3. .3. Now, we also get a little bit of gain off the back corners of the antenna, approximately 4.7 dB at 21.5 degrees. So what I plan on doing is I'm going to use a drive-on mast holder that uh, is going to hold a 31-foot mast. And I'm going to have the feed point of the antenna be about 3, 3, 4 feet up that mast. And then the wire is going to go straight up that mast and then over to another mast. I've got about 50 feet of paracord that I'll hook to the end of the wire and I'll just put it uh, to the end of that mast and kind of pull it tight. So uh, the horizontal section should be about 30 feet up in the air, uh, which should, should work out pretty well. Now with this antenna facing this way uh, north, I should get nice broadside gain to most of the, the United States. And then on 15 meters, um, I should get a couple lobes that are going about 45 degrees. Um, and that should uh, allow me to get up into the northeast of the US, possibly Europe if 15 or 10 meters are open. And then on the other side of the wire, 45 degrees off that side, should be pointed at kind of the Pacific Northwest, Alaska, possibly Japan. I probably won't be out here at the park late enough to get a 10 meter or 15 meter open in Japan, but uh, you never know. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this antenna up. It's uh, pretty windy today, so I'm gonna operate from the truck. So I got the antenna set up and it got quite a bit windier as I was setting it up. So uh, I think sitting in the truck's gonna be a good call for today. Um, let me go ahead and turn the camera around and I'll show you exactly how I have it deployed. So I've got the feed point here um, on a mast and the mast is on this uh, drive-on mast holder that my buddy built me and this thing is just awesome. Uh, it's leaning a little bit because the ground is a little bit uneven but it should work fine. So I've got the feed point with a choke at the feed point and then I've got a uh, short counterpoise and then the radiating element goes up to the top of this mast here. Let's see if I can. So it goes to the top of that mast and look, it's, uh, it's really blowing over. And then I've got another mast over here. The end of the wires may be about three or four feet before it hits that mast. So I just got some paracord. This angle might be a little bit better. Um, you can see this mast is really, really bent over. I could probably work on that, but I think it's going to be okay. And then my other mast is there. So you can see the inverted L and that's facing almost directly north. So I'm going to go ahead and hop in the truck and see if we make some contacts. Now I'd planned on hooking up my Nano VNA again, uh, but honestly, I'm just want to get out of this wind. Um, it was pretty good yesterday at home. I didn't have it deployed in inverted L. I had it going up the mast and then slanted down. The end of it was only about maybe 15 feet off the ground, but it should be close enough. Um, if it's really bad, I might have to uh, make a quick adjustment, but I'm hoping that it'll be close enough uh, to get me on the air. So I'm going to go ahead and jump on. Um, I'm going to look at the uh, maximum usable frequency website, and uh, if 10 meters is open, um, 
I might try 10 meters and then 15 meters, then end up on 20 meters. And I'll probably go through the bands a few times today. I'm, I'm gonna be out here a few hours. So I'm looking at the RBN spots right now, and I finally hit one. I, I hadn't hit one uh, after calling CQ a few times, but the first one I hit was Italy, and it says 21 dB. So I think that uh, configuration is working for me if uh, I'm getting a signal uh, to Italy. I, I got his call sl slightly wrong. So I just got done working 15 meters. So I've worked 10 meters and 15 meters. I got 36 contacts on 10 meters, and then I got 67 contacts on 15 meters using the NFED half wave. And it seemed to work really well. I even got uh, quite a bit of DX. Uh, a lot of uh, stations in Spain, Belgium, Switzerland, France, a few in France, um, more in Switzerland, so uh, doing very good as far as uh, DX, a lot more than I expected on this antenna. Um, it's interesting, um, since I looked at all the radiation patterns beforehand, I can kind of tell that my signal is stronger, my, my signal reports are stronger in the directionality of the lobes 45 degrees off the end of the antenna. So, um, and it seems to work uh, as far as getting into Europe, my uh, placement of the inverted L facing north. Um, so, so far pretty happy. I'm going to jump on uh, 20 meters and uh, make some more contacts. I don't know how long I'll stay. It's pretty miserable outside. It's not bad in the truck, obviously, but uh, the wind's really kicked up here. On this bluff, we get a lot more wind than uh, on the flat ground. And so uh, I think the wind's gusting around 20, 25 miles an hour and it's kind of cool. So uh, good day to be in the truck. So I'm going to jump on 20 meters and see how that works out. Okay, so I just worked 20 meters for a while. Um, I've been activating for around four hours now and made around 200 contacts, a little over 200 contacts. Lots of DX on 10 meters and 15 meters. Uh, the antenna is working great. Um, on 20 meters, I've had a solid pile up for uh, a couple hours. So it's um, working fantastic, really good signal reports. Um, I didn't really notice the knolls on 20 meters to the north and south of me, but um, maybe a little bit weaker there. But overall, I've gotten uh, all over the states on 20 meters. My antenna actually collapsed a little bit. Uh, at the end, the end, of, the end of the inverted L, uh, that mass collapsed, I think, due to the wind. So I'm going to go set that back up. Uh, let me show you. So as you can see here, um, this mass has been blowing over all day, and it's kind of leaning a little bit just because of how I've got it mounted. But um, it's not 30 feet. It's probably a little bit less than that because of the tilt. And then uh, over here on the other mast, uh, it collapsed quite a bit. So the end of the wire is probably about 15 feet up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the end back up and get back on the air. And I think I'm gonna use my bug emulator for a little bit before I head out. Um, I got that the other day and it's, it's been really fun. It works really well actually. It feels just like a real bug. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix the mast and then jump back on the air.
not sure if I showed you the uh, the second mast. I, I basically have that on a small wooden spike that I drove into the ground, and then I've got three guys. So I'm going to take a quick look at the RBN spots for my activation. I'm going to be using my website. So if I plug in my call sign right here, it'll automatically download the raw data from the reverse beacon network. And if you leave everything blank and hit generate map, it downloads the previous UTC dates spots. You can also plug in a date here if you want a different um, day. So we can actually filter this by band. And so what I'm going to do is filter it for, for 10 meters. And you can see that I hit a few um, RBN spots in Europe. And they were approximately 17 dB, 19 dB in Germany, uh, 19 dB, and then in Italy, 14. And then I had a couple weaker ones that were around 7 and 8 dB here. So this is signal to noise ratio. And so that shows my signal was getting out to Europe pretty decent on 10 meters. And then you can also see I was pretty strong up here in the northeast. I was 30 dB here. Um, and so that kind of correlates with the radiation patterns I looked at in the previous video. Now we can take a look at 15 meters. And I didn't hit any uh, reverse beacon network spotters into Europe but I was quite strong all throughout the US especially up here in the Northeast and then the Northwest of me and surprisingly even uh, Southern California I think the strongest one was here in Utah 49 DB and you can see I had 164 spots average was 23.2 DB and then on 20 meters um, you can see that uh, I was, I was pretty decent all across the US. So I just finished my activation using the NFED half wave. It worked really well. Uh, in fact, um, it worked way better than I anticipated. I worked uh, 10 meters, 15 meters, and 20 meters. I got 51 contacts on 10 meters, 71 on 15 meters, and 135 on 20 meters. Um, I got quite a bit of DX on 15 and 10 meters and I only got one DX contact on 20 meters which was Spain but he gave me a 559 so that's pretty good but for my other uh, DX contacts I got six Spanish stations five German five French three Switzerland Slovakia Venezuela Croatia and Belgium so I'm pretty happy with that and uh, really I didn't go a whole lot of time without making contacts um, on 20 meters, I had a, a massive pileup for a long time, and uh, I could have probably stayed there all day. But it's it's really nasty out here. It's really windy. Uh, my masts are really getting jostled with the wind. In fact, my mast on the far end it actually fell down twice on me just because the wind was shaking it and it kind of came down. So I'm gonna get packed up and get out of here. I'm I'm ready to go home and relax. It's uh. It wasn't bad in the truck and I stayed warm enough. It's just uh, even the wind was blowing the truck around, which was surprising. I think the gusts were probably up to about 25, maybe 30 miles an hour. And we've had about 20 mile, or 20 mile an hour sustained winds uh, most of the day. Anyway, um, if you haven't tried an Infat Half Wave, I suggest you build your own 49 to 1 Unin. Uh, you can follow uh, the first video I did, which shows you how to do that using a uh, better toroid, it's more efficient, and uh, I think today proves that it works really well. For those that say infed half waves don't work, um, you know, I think I think my activation today proves they work great. Um, you know, whatever loss you do have um, it is not enough to not make contacts, and I was running 75 watts, so. That was a big part of it, um, but even QRP, you're going to do great. The NFED half wave, great antenna. I'll see you next time, 73.